Hello, my name is Peter Kraus from Mycian. I want to show you first steps using the microwave wizard. Here is part one. Uh, we start with examples that come with the microwave wizard. After you started the microwave wizard, following graphical user interface comes up. The first I'm going to show you is how to load one of our examples that comes with the microwave wizard. For that we go up here to the files menu, go to start options and go start with an example. Here you can see a dialog that shows on the left side a tree view with all available projects and now we go for example to a filter project if you go here you can click on the projects and on the right side you can see a picture of the current structure of this project and up here on the top you can see the name of the project uh, the version of the microwave wizard that creates that project uh, then the last editing the frequency range you can see here and the number of sub-circuits that are inside of this project. Now we can look through that, you can see what kind of projects are available. You can see all these pictures so you can choose maybe there are some projects that you are interested in that fulfill a little bit of your needs. So actually I wanted to open a very simple project that only contains one circuit. This is called filter underline iris. I either click or double click on this knot here or I click OK. So after the project is loaded I give you some explanation. On the left side there you see the project tree view. The project tree view has a few knots. The first knot on the top is the frequencies knot. There you see the variables knot, uh, the circuits knot and the default settings knot. The knot below that is the field plots knot. This is only available when you have a fleet pot simulation. Um, I just open the frequency knot and you can see here the first the frequency sweep setting we switched on called adaptive sweep and one frequency range. Here we have the variables knot with all available variables in this project and here the circuits knot. If I make a double click on that it will appear actually on the right side in the schematic but this circuit is already available so we don't need to do that. Yes, uh, actually the first we want to do is just run the project. For that we have here two green triangles, or buttons with triangles. The first one has, l uh, the icon shows a little few more windows, that means this is for a project. So it will always start the highest level circuit, in this case the is only one circuit so it's a main circuit. Here you see only one little window in the icon up there. This always will start the current visible circuit. For this project it doesn't make any difference because the main circuit is only one circuit so we can either press this button or this button to run the entire project. But we're going to do that on this. So we just make a run project. You can press or click this item or press F9. Now we just start and you see after one second you can see that here the project is finished. You will say it's very very fast and it's true because this project contains only pure, genuine, mode matching discontinuities. These iris are all simulated by mode matching itself and that makes it so fast. Even when we switch the sweep type to normal, which is normally way slower than adaptive sweep, you will see uh, 
there is no big difference in the speed. You can see it was simulating about 300 frequency steps in one second. Um, when I double click on the frequency range, for example, a certain editor will come up. In this case, the project options window or dialog, which is actually the dashboard of the project. Here you can see in the first tab the frequency ranges, the second tab shows the variables, the third tab shows all available circuits in this project, and here you can see the default settings of dimensions, cutoff frequency and symmetry of this project. You can see when I double click on the variable var underline a1 Again, the project options window will turn up and shows the variables tab. Um, and you see here the plot is in dB, but you can have different plots, for example, the dB in absolute value or linear or even the plot, uh, plot group delay. Now I will show you another project which has two sub-circuits. So we don't save that and say, you want to save the filter? No. We go back again to the start options to start with examples. Again into the filter branch of this tree view and we go to filter iris sub, which is actually, I'm not 100% sure about the same filter, but here I use sub-circuits or one sub-circuit. So the project is loaded and you can see here this project contains two circuits. First of all I'm just gonna run this and you can see again a nice filter. Now I want to show you the difference between those two buttons. I just pressed here. I'm the current circuit is the RX underline fill underline main. And if I press here, it will simulate the entire project. If I go to this filter, I would run this again, the left button of those two triangle, uh, green triangle buttons. Again, it will simulate the entire structure. Now I go on the sub circuit. And if I want to run only this subsecond. This is possible. You just can take one part of the structure and just run that. If I press here, run circuit, it will simulate only half of the circuit. You can see that. It's a different result. This is the entire circuit and this is only the simulation of this structure. And this structure is part of the entire structure. You can see those two elements. These are references to this sub-circuit. So it will be used twice. And we do that because of saving memory and saving simulation time. Because you only have to simulate that once and you use it twice. To see the structure we just open here this button brings up the 3D viewer and shows the structure that is currently in the editor. In this case it's the RX underline fill underline half. You know, here you can see the half filter structure. We can zoom in by pressing plus or we can zoom out by pressing minus. Now you can see the structure of the half of the filter. If you go here to the main circuit and we click on this button you can see the entire filter structure. Here you see this is the entire filter. Okay I think for the first you can try out a lot of project that we created for you and you can see the capabilities of the microwave wizard. Don't hesitate to contact us in case you have some other questions. Thank you.